A 12-month subscription to Nintendo Switch Online could be yours. Subscribe and enter using the link in the description below. Good luck! Hello and welcome to this GameCube game building exercise. I'm Neil Flynn and I'm here today to help you build a GameCube game collection from a very small budget of around £200. Now I'm going to actually help with the selection of games. This is going to be majority probably helping people in the UK, mainly because I am using a website here called CEX. It's a very well known retail trading game and DVD store. Uh, they have a website and obviously physical stores in the UK. And I have pulled together around 20 games that I think you should be able to get for around £200. These games may have had better sequels or even ports to the consoles, uh, some of them are exclusive to the GameCube or have never been ported over, but I think if you're trying to build a GameCube game collection from scratch and you want to do it on a relative budget and you want to find some of the sort of more niche titles but also some of the great titles, then take a look at this video, let me know what you think, make sure you give us a subscribe, ring that bell, comment, like, do whatever YouTube people will tell you to do because I pretend I'm doing this like I know what I'm doing. Anyway. Let's get on with this and as you can see up on screen right now I believe the first game that we should get is Donkey Konga. Donkey Konga with the bongos £20 in CEX. This is a rhythm game that you use the bongos to tap to the beat. Uh, you clap on the side or you clap out loud with your hands because that's what you do with clapping and <laughs> you it is just a rhythm action game. If you've played Guitar Hero or any of the other types of games then you will know exactly what to do here but they have licensed songs that are done by cover bands sure some of them um, are a little bit obviously away from the from the mark but nonetheless these are some really really fun games developed by bandai uh, not bandai namco it was just namco but developed by namco this was a great game i thought at the time i really really enjoyed it i still have my bongos i still have donkey Konga, and i have its sequels as well i say sequels i only have donkey Konga 2 i think donkey Konga 3 was a Japanese exclusive. Donkey Konga 3. Yeah. Anyway, so Donkey Konga, £20. That is how we're going to start off with that. That's, 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 I know that's a lot of our budget. That's 10% of our budget and we've got 20 games. Uh, the maths is not going very well so far. Moving on though. A good use of those bongos is to spend another £20 and put it down on Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. This is a 2D action platformer, it's very challenging, it, eh, that's a lie, it's actually quite easy, but recommended to use the bongos. Uh, you press the left bongo to go left and you press the right bongo to go right and there's a few other actions in there as well. Really really enjoyable. This was actually developed by Nintendo EAD, great game, go out and buy it, um, you won't regret buying Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. This is actually on the Wii if you do have a Wii but I think it's more fun on the GameCube because you get to use the bongos and that is a prime reason as to one of you get it. Segwaying into prime reasons to getting something. Metroid Prime on the GameCube. Phenomenal for its time. The graphics, the atmosphere, the platforming. Something that no one really expected from a 3D platformers such as Metroid. We, it was a long time coming. We hadn't had a Metroid game since Super Metroid. It was a game that uh, Retro Studios sort of had in development hell until Nintendo came along and sort of gave it a bit of a direction that they always do and put it back on its right path. It spawned two sequels that have come out, direct sequels that is. Uh, we've also got Metroid Prime Hunters and we've also got Metroid Prime Federation Force. And we're going to have the Metroid Prime 4 on Nintendo Switch as well. So Metroid, fantastic platforming, adventure series. It's a first person adventure as Nintendo liked to call it back in the day. You roll into tight little spaces, you scan things and you just shoot things and you progress through places and backtrack through places and collect stuff and scan stuff. You don't need to tell me, you don't need me to tell you rather about Metroid Prime. This is a fantastic game, one of the ones that the GameCube's probably well known for, one of the top selling games on the system, it's £18 in CEX. Moving on, I'm suggesting that you spend £15 on this, it's a game made by the team that made GoldenEye, they, they 
went off and formed their own team, Free Radical. Um, you'll see a lot of James Bond, GoldenEye, 007 features in here, you know, just from things like how health power is, but it's so much more. It is such a frantic, fantastic multiplayer game, but the story is good as well. Even now, people still talk about this game. It's so well revered. There was a sequel. I didn't particularly like the sequel as much as I pref uh, as Time Splitters 2. There's also, it's been in funding for a while, or it's been talked about for a while, but there is going to be another sequel to this game. Whether it comes out or not, I don't know. But if you've got £15 spare, definitely go and find a copy of Time Splitters 2. You won't regret it. It's first person shooter. It's really fast, really frantic. You've got four players available on playing on the GameCube, playing locally, obviously. Um, you won't you just won't regret it. Now moving on to one of my all-time favorites and I know this sounds weird I am not being sarcastic. I really enjoy Star Fox Adventures. At the time when it came out I thought it looked sublime. Yes it's not what people would call a true Star Fox game. Don't get me wrong my one of my first games really was Star Wing or Star Fox on the SNES and I really really enjoyed Star Fox and Lilac Wars or Star Fox 64 but Star Fox Adventures is very different. It was Rare's, pretty much Rare's last game that they solely developed for Nintendo at the time. I don't know why their logo is not on the front of this box. But this was a game that was called Dinosaur Planet on a Nintendo 64. Nintendo came along and said, well, what about if we put some Star Fox characters in there? So they did. And you, I, I feel like the back end of this game is a little bit rushed. I feel like you just literally do the last 25% of the game in the space of an hour. And it just sort of, not abruptly ends, but it just sort of ends. Up until that point, really, really enjoyable. It's not that it's a bad ending. It's 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 fun. It's not Star Fox. You, there are a few shooting situations in space, but they're nothing compared to what the actual challenge of Star Fox is. Uh, but this is what they would say is Star Fox's Zelda moment. It is pushing boxes and getting from place to place, fetch quests, this, that, and the other. There's a few sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes using staff, so it's not hand-to-hand. -hand. But you know what I mean, it, it, it's very different. I recommend getting it. If you can find it for £12, then it's an absolute must in my book. Now, here is a game, Henshin Go Go Baby, Beautiful Joe. Fantastic game, one of the Capcom 5 games, and a couple of those other games will be in this list as well, don't you worry, but for £15, Beautiful Joe is, is a very quirky, beat-em-up, side-scrolly action game that uses different powers to rewind and recut. There are a few other games as well, Beautiful Joe 2 and also one on the DS. Uh, there was another game as well, which is a Rumble game, I believe. In fact, they're actually down here. Look, they're here. I don't even have to go here. So you've got Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble and Beautiful Joe 2, but as you can see, they're a little bit pricier than the original. I really enjoy Beautiful Joe, but the second game is brilliant as well, if you're willing to shell out £42 for it. But no, fantastic game. Gameplay on screen should be hopefully be showing you what there is to enjoy about this game. But one of Capcom's Capcom 5, they said this was going to be initially a GameCube exclusive, and uh, there were a few other games in that list that they said they were going to do in that deal. Eventually, a lot of those games actually all became uh, available on other systems, but it was Capcom's way of showing Nintendo support for their new system. £15, get involved with Beautiful Joe. Now, Resident Evil 4 is one of the other games that were going to be a GameCube exclusive from Capcom as part of that Capcom 5. £12. Now, this game is available on pretty much any system that you can find it on. It's on the Wii, it's on the Switch, as well as all the other competitive consoles as well. But I really love Resident Evil 4. I think it's brilliant on the GameCube. I really like the GameCube controller uh, for this. I know a lot of people really love the Wii version as well for its pointer controls, Sublime. And I'm not saying it's not great on the other platforms as well, you can get it on the all current gen consoles I believe. But I just think there's something special about owning it on GameCube, I just really enjoyed it. £12, if you don't own Resident Evil 4 on any other platform and for some reason uh, you don't have any other platforms and the GameCube's going to be your first game console, then then buy this, it is, it's phenomenal. Um, one of the best Resident Evil games out there. I wasn't really a fan of the original sort of three games or four games if you count Resident Evil Zero in terms of the tank controls I thought they were a bit clunky I, I tried 
liking it a lot. When I was younger, I, I struggled with a lot of those games, but I really like the concept of the zombie horror. I got my words mixed up there. The zombie horror franchise that it was. I like the idea of the characters and the stories and the cheese of the first, uh, the first Resident Evil. Those cutscenes were something else, especially that opening scene. But Resident Evil 4, for me, it was, it was so well hyped. It was so well done. I'm gushing a bit too much. I got to move on. But if you don't know about Resident Evil 4 in this video that you're seeing right now hasn't done it for you, then I don't know what will. Moving on to one of the all-time great platforming games, in my mind, at mascots, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Mega Collection. When this came out, I couldn't believe what I was getting. This, this is a phenomenal value for money. You'll see the games that are listed in this collection here from Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic 3 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Knuckles, yeah. Um, and Knuckles and Sonic 2 and a, and a few other things. You get a few other games as well. Dr. Bean, Dr. Bean, Beans, Bean, Machine. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> I, I, I'm not reading these off, by the way. I am not, I'm not watching my footage back. There are quite a few games on here that you will absolutely love. I think if you want all your Sonic games in one place, get Sonic Mega Collection. I still don't think this has really been bettered. Okay, yeah, I know there was one on the PC and the other platform, Sonic Mega Collection Plus, blah, blah, blah. But the Sonic Mega Collection on GameCube, I think it's great. There are other ways to get the missing games from this collection that you get from the Plus version. So if you get Sonic Adventure DX, you can unlock Game Gear games that is missing from this collection in there. And there's a few other ways as well. So I really enjoy it. For £12, you're getting, in my mind, four of the greatest Sonic games of all time, Sonic to Sonic and Knuckles. There is another Sonic collection on the GameCube this day and age, would I recommend it? Uh, it depends how much it's going for, but if I had to go for one or the other, it has to be Sonic Collection. Do it. Another Namco game makes the list, and this time it's Soul Calibur 2, 10 pound. I, I, I don't know what to say about this game that you might not already know, but there were three games, the Xbox version, the PlayStation 2 version, and the GameCube version. And the GameCube version included Link from The Legend of Zelda, one of the best exclusive bonuses that I think has ever been included in a multi-platform game. This was a game changer for me. It must have been the best-selling version of the game. I don't know why it hasn't really been done since. Namco have included Nintendo characters in Tekken since then, but I don't know why Soul Calibur hasn't had that sort of situation again it has to come to a nintendo platform to start with but soul Calibur 2 is a phenomenal fighting game the first game on the dreamcast i really 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 enjoyed i think it looks great even if you plug it into a vga adapter and everything now these days it, it looks fantastic soul Calibur 2 and the gamecube it it looks fantastic to this day the music the the action it is brilliant if you've never played a soul Calibur game before i think it's quite accessible for newcomers there are a lot of button combinations. I'm not saying there's not, and there's you know there's command list. But once you get used to it, um, it's not one of the hardest uh, games. And Link is very easy to use, so a very accessible character from the start. So if you don't own Soul Calibur 2, get to it. Next game on this list is Wave Race. Phenomenal. I, I don't know how many times I've said that in this video. This should be a counter or something. This game, the sequel to the Nintendo 64's Wave Race 64, Wave Race Blue Storm. This game had everything for me. Great physics, great racing, the music, the characters, which were used in other, other games as well. Very early, early game. This was a launch game developed by Nintendo themselves, Nintendo Software Technology, which was a US-based studio who developed some of the best uh, Nintendo GameCube games in my mind in terms of uh, Wave Race Blue Storm, 1080, games here and there. Wave Race for £6. I, I just still can't believe this is £6 in this day and age official Nintendo GameCube game. There's not been a sequel to this game, which I don't know, maybe that's what's caused the price to be so low. I think it's one of Nintendo's better racing games out there. I know Mario Kart is, is up there with everybody. Nonetheless, Wave Race Blue Storm, if you've got £6 in your wallet, go and get it. Speaking of Nintendo, software technology. Here's another one from them. 
1080 Avalanche. Now, 1080 Avalanche is probably the only Nintendo game that I know of that had a licensed soundtrack to it. This introduced the band Seether to me, which um, I've loved ever since. I've gone to go and see them live, and that's because I got introduced to them from 1080 Avalanche. And I, now, this game is a bit... I don't think it's as good as Wave Race. However, the snowboarding aspect of it, I really liked, because it's a snowboarding game, obviously. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it was great. For £8, you won't hate it. There are other snowboarding games, as you can see, SSX3 also is £8, probably a game that's worth getting. Um, I really love 1080. Again, it's so cheap, £8, but probably because this is the last one in its series. They haven't made another game in a 1080 franchise. Sequel to the N64 game, which I thought was fantastic as well. Like for £8, I think you'll enjoy it. I've got nostalgia for it. I really like the soundtrack. The, the, the races are very short, too short in my mind, but it was fine for me. Here's one that it, it might be flown under the radar for a few people, and that's Vex. Vex for £10. I don't know. I, people may have heard of this, but this is a 3D platformer. I thought it looked gorgeous. I had stunning visuals at the time. Yeah, there were a few murky textures here or there, but I thought it was really good. Puzzles galore. I, I remember it being very long. I don't think I ever got to the end of Vex. Maybe I should add it back to my backlog. But for what I played of it, I, I really enjoyed the sort of puzzles, the, the combat and everything about it, really. Obviously not enough to finish it, but for £10, yeah, I think it's worth a punt. Okay, this is probably one of the ones where you go in to look at me and say, we don't trust your opinion anymore. And in one way, I, 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 I get it. It's a, it's a shaky game, but I wouldn't be recommending it if it wasn't, if it wasn't only four pound. Four pound, enter the matrix, in my mind, is worth it. Yes, it's a bit weird, it's a bit clunky, the, the combat can be, hmm. But if you're a matrix fan, this fills in a gap between the movies uh, where we actually see these two characters. We see uh, Naomi or Ghost. There's a slightly different uh, story depending on who you play with, third person's perspective. It is available on other, other systems as well, so it's not a GameCube exclusive. In fact, actually the other ones probably have better quality cutscenes. But for four pound, I, th I think it's really good. It, it, it does fill in a little bit of the story. So if you are a Matrix fan, it's worth, it's worth looking at because you will then actually get to see some of the sort of hidden story or missing story from the other parts of the movies. Okay, just take a punt, do it. Okay. Now, this game is very, very interesting. It comes with a microphone. It's called Adama. It's a pinball game. It was released very late on in the GameCube cycle. I don't know really what else to say about this other than what you can see. You can... You can use the, the microphone to obviously yell commands down there. Realistically, Adama is, is, is one of these ones that I think you're going to have to look at in detail. It's, it's a pinball game that is very different. Moving on. Sonic Team's probably most, one of their best games that they developed after the Sonic series. Uh, Billy Hatcher and the giant egg you roll this giant egg around and it It's really fun and I, I it's it's really strange that Billy Hatcher hasn't really been seen outside of This game ever since he might have made a cameo in maybe sports or racing games or something But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised there's never been a sequel to this game. I'm fairly certain. It's still a GameCube exclusive I don't think it's been ported in any way shape or form if you are a fan of the Sonic games, or if you're a fan of just action platformers, 3D platformers, that type of thing, Billy Hatcher for £12. It's it's a very, ex as far as I'm aware to this day, exclusive. I'm, I'm fairly certain it's, it's a GameCube exclusive, and it's still a unique experience to be had now. So go out and, go out and try it for £12. If you like what you're seeing on screen, go and do it. Now, here are going to be a flurry of games. And if you don't like Star Wars, I suggest you fast forward to whatever the timestamp I suggest on screen now, because there's going to be a flurry of Star Wars games. Now, what I would recommend here is buying Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. Now, this game has 
on foot sequences, it has multiplayer, it has cooperative, it has has so many action sequences that people have become to know from the Star Wars universe, and it's only eight pound. Now there is another Star Wars game, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, Rogue Leader. That game was a GameCube launch game. It looks fantastic, but that game is actually included inside of Rebel Strike. So for eight pound, you get both of those games. However, that game, which I think actually has better flying sequences or better, better flight levels, that game is only available to play in co-op. So you need to have a friend helping you. You don't, you can't access that game solo. So if, if you're a Star Wars fan, I suggest going by in both. You can go and buy Rogue Leader. It's only six pound and you have access to that to play that solo. So if you're only playing by yourself, if you can't find someone to play couch co-op with, go and buy Rogue Leader and Rebel Strike because I think they're fantastic games. And if you like flying, then you should get these games. Likewise, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, it's a great game, is it? I don't know. Um, I think with the Mandalorian being popular, I'm surprised that they haven't really kind of gone down the route of going, seeking the Mandalorian stories. I, I'm surprised that it's not really gone down that way. Um, it's been such a popular TV series, I'm sure there must be another game coming. But Star Wars Bounty Hunter, just go out and play it. You'll really enjoy it. 12 quid. Another Star Wars game on this list is Clone Wars. Really, really interesting game for an interesting time in the series. It fills in the gaps between the movies, uh, not quite necessarily following the storyline of uh, what we see in the, the animated TV show. But this game, Vehicle Combat, it's really fun. I used to play this game with my cousin all the time. We used to do this sort of um, gauntlet mode where you just have waves and waves of enemies and we'll just try and see how far we get. Again, it could be the nostalgia talking, but for five pound, I found this game really interesting. If you are a Star Wars fan and a real Star Wars fan, you'll really, really enjoy this game. Now, these two games, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 are probably going to get ported to the next gen consoles. I would be surprised after seeing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remastered or HD or whatever they want to call it going to the current gen. I don't know if they will bundle them together or if they'll even go at all. But what I will say is that both of these games are fantastic pieces of fun. If you were alive in the 2000s and the late 90s, you will know Tony Hawk's was probably one of the biggest gaming franchises that was going on, especially in this generation. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, I think a lot of people found this to be the sort of upper echelon of the game series before it started going maybe a little bit downhill, um, no pun intended with downhill jam. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, in my mind, I really enjoyed this too. In fact, I probably enjoyed Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 more than 3. Both of these are great games and for £6 and £8 respectively, go out and buy them. If you've really enjoyed the remasters, go back to these. It might be a little bit harder to do on the eyes, but the soundtrack is there, it's present, it's great. The tasks that you have to do are great. The level design is fantastic. Go out and play them. You won't regret it. And to round off this list are two James Bond games. And there are more James Bond games available on the GameCube uh, from Agent Under Fire, to Russia with Love, GoldenEye Rogue Agent, but Everything or Nothing is a third person game that had, had a story. It's got William Dafoe, it's got Pierce Brosnan playing James Bond. It's very different from James Bond games at the time, which were mainly first person. The sequences are good, the story is unique, and that's what I really, really like about this. This is probably one of the best story James Bond games that, that came out around this time period, or probably ever. It was more compelling than probably watching uh, the cutscenes from games that we know, but absolutely go and go and buy James Bond's Everything or Nothing for five pound. This game is is, is is brilliant. And considering there's been a lull in James Bond games, we know that there is a new one coming out soon by the team that made Hitman. In the meanwhile, why not try Everything or Nothing? Or if you wanted to have a first person shooter, then we absolutely must recommend 
007 Nightfire. Nightfire, in my mind, great, great first person shooting. I, I struggle to go back to Goldeneye now. Eek, I know, I know, but playing a game at 20 frames per second is really difficult. And I think Nightfire is really fun. Just go out and try it. The multiplayer is great. The story is okay. I, for an early ish GameCube game, of course, it's available on other platforms, as is everything or nothing, by the way. But it's still a great game and it's still really cheap. So there you have it. There's 20 or so games available on the GameCube for £200 in total. Yeah, I knew it. Maybe it took a bit of liberty with that budget. Take out some of the Star Wars games or the James Bond games if you didn't necessarily want to go over it. But games like Billy Hatcher, games like Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, games such as Soul Calibur 2. These are fantastic examples of what made the GameCube so great, so unique. These exclusives were around having Metroid Prime and at the time Resident Evil 4. Great games. And you can get all these games for £200. Now you've got to find the GameCube and they can vary from anything from £30 to to 80 pound but if you can get your hands on a gamecube or even a wii remember the wii plays gamecube games go out and buy an original model wii to make sure it does play gamecube games some of the later models don't play gamecube games so make sure you check that before you buy your wii but that's also another way of of accessing that gamecube library go out find one play it anyway i've been neil i've rambled on long enough thank you guys for listening and if you have any more ideas for any GameCube games that you'd like to, to see from us, then let us know in the comments below. But for now, guys, that's everything. <laughs>